Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at OhioCon 2019 with my good pal, Mr. Jeremy Inman. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, so how did you get started in the world of voice acting? Oh, geez, by accident, honestly. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, I knew a, I, I can't even call him a friend. He was just some guy I ran into at a show at a theater, and he was telling me about he was doing these bit parts for this show called Dragon Ball Z. And I, like anybody, I'm like, how do you get into that? Yeah. And um he gave me Chris Sabat's phone number. I <laughs> called him. This is back in the day when there, you didn't have to have a reel or anything. You could yeah. just call Sabat up. And I uh, went and auditioned. And a month later, I got the part of Android 16. And literally, that was the start of what is now my career. It's crazy. So you got to start at the bank. Yes, at the old Frost Bank building <laughs> on the fifth floor. I can't remember what floor it was. Uh, yeah, that's... From the start. <laughs> All righty. So it says in your bio that uh, magically that you happen to be a firefighter slash paramedic. What was it like and how did you get into that career? Well, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like getting into acting, really. I like it really. There's a lot of parallels. I moved to Texas from California where I had been doing theater stuff, you know, and I was really young when we moved. I was like 21 when we moved to Texas. So I was like, well, I can't imagine there's any kind of real acting work in Texas. I might as well try to do what else I wanted to do, which was be a firefighter. So I did that. I, I went through that process. I went through a semester of doing theater at a community college and then went to the fire academy, <laughs> trained as a hazardous material technician. Oh, really? Yeah. Then went to the fire academy. Uh, and would, to be, become a firefighter, you have to test for different mm -hmm. cities. So it's kind of like auditioning, but you have to do a physical agility right. test and carry hoses and crap like that. It worked out. It's like I wasn't looking to become an actor. I did something else with my life, and then I became an actor. So I got the best of both worlds for a while. Uh, that actually reminds me, there's one other famous person that's a firefighter paramedic, and that was uh, the Red Ranger from the original Power Rangers back in the day. Oh, right. In the 90s, yeah. And Steve Buscemi. Yeah, Steve Buscemi, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, now, so you recently happened back in 2017, 2018, working on the smash hit, You're on Ice, being JJ. What was it like knowing how much that show changed the conversation about ice skating and the LGBT issues um, and the overwhelming support you've received from fans over the years? Crazy. Let me give you a little behind the curtain. I was working as a contract director. Uh, when Yuri on Ice came through Funimation. And what usually happens when Funimation divvies up titles is they give uh, you list the contractors and the other full-time directors there uh, a list of shows. And that's the, that's the season I got Saga of Tanya the Evil, which is an amazing show, by the way. You should be watching it right now. Um, uh, and Yuri on Ice was on the list, and everybody was like, what, ice skating? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, to my knowledge, everyone just kind of passed on it, and Sonny really? Strait ended up with it. Right. Um, and then it turned into this huge sleeper hit yeah. that nobody saw coming, and it was crazy. I got JJ kind of almost by accident. Uh, I was walking into Sonny's studio to invite him to go have drinks at this place called The Drunken Donkey, yeah. and then the rest is history. So, uh, but sorry, there were other issues you were asking me about, but oh. that's always fun. LGBT? Oh, yeah. yeah, LGBT issues. Uh, yeah, that's great. I don't happen to be LGBT myself, but um, I think it's really, it's been really powerful to see a community rally behind a show like that and kind of mainstream it even more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, along with ice skating, um, my, my girlfriend happens to be an almost pro ice skater. <laughs> Because so. uh, actually a lot of uh, Olympic skaters actually did um, perform yes. sets from those songs. Yes, yes, that was amazing. At the Winter Olympics, yeah, yeah. yeah that was uh, the, the, one of the American, uh, what was his name? But it, we were Twittering back yeah. and forth. Twittering, that's what you call it, right? Yeah. Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So, um, and again, it's a show that I love and makes me cry every time. And I've had the chance to talk to Sonny and Jerry and Josh yeah. and talk to all of them and just get a lot of love from them. And I tell them all the time, it makes me cry. So I've watched it two, twice, like, literally back to back sometimes. Uh, now, again, going back to your original start as being Android 16, there's a new movie coming out uh, with Broly. And you had the opportunity to work on the uh, fighting game, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, what's it been like to be Android 16 now for over 19? years no uh, it makes me feel so ancient <laughs> somebody um, somebody asked me how long have you been voice acting and I said 19 years without even and then it's like 19 years and then it hits it's like a oh geez wow 
uh, it's been life changing. I didn't get, like I said, I auditioned almost up by accident. Uh, and now I'm a full time director at Funimation. So you can't really ask for more of a life altering decision. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been amazing. My favorite is that uh, I happen to also know a lot of the guys at Team Four Star, and I always still love how they re redo you whenever they have to. Oh, Goku, yeah. birds, Bad birds and whatnots, and let's get a drink. How about that? Take that, Four Star. <laughs> I could still do joke Android 16 better than you. <laughs> Now you're currently working on. You were currently working on the hit My Hero Academia as Megan. Uh, me. Bog. Magna. Thank you. Uh, how has that been going for you and the fan response to that character? It's been going good. I actually love his voice, and I'm really, I guess Colleen uh, Klingenberg, the director, liked it too. It's um, but there's so much little, I can't say so much, but there's just enough of Ed Wynn in it. It's like just a little flavor, I think, that I really love. Uh, like any actor, it's like he needs to be in that show more, just because I love doing his voice so much. It's funny, or. <clears throat> Yeah, but he's uh, he's an interesting character. He's just got an interesting look to him. He's fun. Alrighty, and now you also now started directing at Funimation, as we discussed, working on uh, Golden uh, Kami? Kumi? Kamui, thank you. And uh, Relife, two titles that uh, fans have really enjoyed. What's it been like for you and learning new skills to bring back to your side of the glass when you go back to do voice acting? Yeah, it's amazing how much, like, I always said uh, I'm a better voice director than I am voice actor. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Uh, when I was just contract directing after I left the fire department, I got into other forms of directing film and television, like first AD work. I directed a TV show, different things. So, but it has made directing anime or voice, the d voice dub of anime mm -hmm. uh, has definitely made me a better voice actor. That's for sure. For sure. I mean, I spent a good 10 years out of that 19 just kind of, maybe they'll cast me. I don't know. You know, it's <laughs> just ruining it. Well, dovetailing off of that, you talked about being a first AD. What technically is that role with inside a production uh, being in a movie or television series? And how did you even get started in that? Oh, geez. Um, I got it started uh, working as a first AD um, from my anime directing experience it's weird how it's like it's kind of i would i did contract anime directing back in 2004 in the 2006 with shows like desert punk oh, um wow. yeah, yeah that's punk, that's yeah. how i met eric vale and we became yeah. close uh then that work kind of dried up a little bit funimation went a couple different routes and then i went to go work uh in live production experience uh first ad just technically is um there's a pre-production job of first AD is basically organize the production. Um, you're setting, uh, oh geez, I don't have the time to really go into it, but you're basically organizing the production. And when on principal photography has started, you're basically the boss of the production. Oh, good. Um, uh, they don't get a lot of credit because a lot of people don't know what they do, but they're basically running the set. And then the first AD has also a second AD, and sometimes a second second AD. Uh, they handle things like it's a big production, like extras. Like if this was a huge set, and these were all extras at a film about an anime con, the second AD and the first AD. Would be That's what a first AD does. And I got into that. Um, God, how much time you got? Jeez, I got hired on to do a movie. Uh, that uh, an Academy Award winning special effects artist was on and I got hired on as a script supervisor uh, with the guys that one of the producers was going to be the actual first AD on set but he was never there so so um, was it it's not, so I ended up just acting like the first AD anyway and he promoted me the second day of shooting that's kind of my little hanger to hang my hat on is that I got um Hired as a first AD by an Academy Award winner, so I like to. Burr, burr, burr. I'm not going to drop any names though, because I don't want Google searches or whatever. Um, and then I did. Uh, I worked another movie as a first AD, and a television show. But anyway, yeah, it's a really good job. I always. It's, I used to do production industry panels at these an anime cons to talk about the different jobs, because people. Uh, just focus on the actor or the voice yeah, yeah, actor yeah. and there's a whole huge world out there of creative energy and collaboration that goes into making this project whether it's an anime dub or a movie or a television show but nobody it always, it always frustrates me because nobody gets any of that attention or love they just want to see who like I don't know who's this this guy the, yeah sure yeah that guy 
for some voice work he did. When that's goofy. Really like, I mean, it's Max. Yeah, they're like literally 10 to 25 percent of the production, depending on the production and how big the role is. Uh, I actually do a panel called Directing an Anime and Why You Should Care. I talk, I break that down a lot more as far as the process of producing a episode a week for a dub and how everyone loves the voice actors, but they're really there like one to three hours max sometimes for the episode. Actually, I whenever I watch the credits, I actually do look for you guys, actually. Yeah. as Oh, yeah, whenever I see, like, who's the ADR director, I look for that. I look yeah. for the script writer. I always look for all the post-production yeah, stuff. The casting the people you love so much, <laughs> giving them the actual job. So, anyway. But <laughs> all righty. Not just the directors, the sound engineers and the mix artists and stuff like yeah, that. No, There's all kinds that. of things that go into that. Yeah. I, I wish anime cons would start... Um, bringing more people like that into the con arena uh of, i mean it just it depends on what they want if fans just want to see their favorite voice actor great but if they want to know a more uh if they want to have a broader knowledge of how an anime dub is produced then that would be cool <laughs> i mean like i said i I'd be i came from theater so i yeah. look for that type of stuff so it's a lot of fun uh going ahead um where can we potentially check you out in more titles we obviously know about pesky ndas so what do you have potentially coming up that you want like uh, that's currently still in the simul dubs right uh, yeah, I just wrapped Golden Conway, which I loved. It's the best show. You should be watching it. Absolutely. Um, I'm look next week. I don't like. I can't. I've, <laughs> it's like all like hush hush. Yeah, it's like I know the shows I'm getting, but I only I don't start it until next week, so I don't think I can announce. But I can give you probably a clue. Actually, here, let me give you a clue. This cat right here. Yeah. Riding a cowboy. Uh, this is your clue. This is your clue yeah, with as far as my next show. Directing wise, I'm not really, I don't think I'm casting anything right now. <laughs> so. I don't know who I want. Yeah. I, just <laughs> I gotta get that information on Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get back to work Monday and cast everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we talked to Jerry about that actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, going forward, uh, where can we catch you online? And a final message to the fans that have been keeping up with you now for over 19 years. God, have they though? I have. Okay. <laughs> um, find me on Twitter. It's like at Inman Jeremy or at Jeremy Inman. I can't have a remit. Let me look real quick. I don't know. Hold on. I think, it, yeah, just at something. That I spend, uh, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. Um, oh, geez. Come on. Load. Yeah. At Inman Jeremy. Um, I have a Facebook page voice actor page called uh, Jeremy Emin voice actor slash director yeah. so go ahead and find me on that if you want um, uh oh here we go Ohio Con shoppers and that's really my only social media presence right now I'm on Instagram if you guys are doing that Jeremy Inman it's not hard <laughs> alrighty and a, and a message you want to give to the fans that have been watching now for over 19 years oh thank you I guess thank you for this career I never thought I would have. I didn't know what anime was until I got Android 16 and now this is this is my life now. <laughs> so, thank you. Again, Jeremy, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. 